I'm here and I'm totally prepared. <laughs> the podcast version um i'm gary i'm here with my uh my pals uh allison and chris allison is a spider farmer um <laughs> i don't know what else needs to be said about that and a um and chris is a, a nightshade botanist um so they bring a very distinct skill set to our conversations today uh the premise of the show is allison brings a topic we may or may not know anything about it and then we talk about it until um our screen recording software says you have one to many minutes left and cuts us off. Well, it says, one, it says one minute. In, in actuality, it is many. It is somewhere, some random number between one and who knows? Five, five <laughs> one and <laughs> one plus yes. something. One plus X. Solve for X. Yeah, so how have you all been? Same old. Yeah. I got woken up this morning by uh, my son saying someone's knocking at the door and we had a delivery of 300 landscaping blocks that uh, arrived at 7.30. Were you uh, before seven, landscaping? Yeah. I was. I wasn't expecting okay. them at 7.30. I, it, 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 there was conflicting information because uh, it said that the delivery could happen anywhere between 6 a.m. and 8 p.m. And then when I actually checked out, it said, okay, your delivery will be between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. It's a pretty broad window. <laughs> so I'm like, surely if there's anything at all that says that they could wait another two hours, that they will wait another two hours just because you know, delivery people aren't uh, prompt and on time ever. Mm -hmm. um, but when the, when the truck came, like my order is the only thing on the truck. So apparently they have a very slow day. Are you, uh, are you folks Amazon, customer, Amazon Prime customers? Yes. What's the prime situation been for you recently? Like we got a district, we have a distribution center that opened in Jack's and it went from like, Oh, it's pretty much all two day to like processing, processing, processing. Your order will be delivered tomorrow. And then 20 minutes later, someone's beating on my door with an order. It's weird. There's no rhyme or reason any longer. To it's how it's usually, uh, it's usually a couple of days, but they're building a new processing center um, by the airport. So I expect it will be much shorter. Um, I wouldn't expect that. I would expect that they will give you less information now because they have no <laughs> idea what they're doing with the new distribution center. If my experience is anything like yours would be. But I, I also expect that this uh, new processing center uh, near us is just going to enable drone deliveries. That's so that, has your um, state legislator talked about that kind of stuff or no? I, they've, they're all go Amazon, yay. Um, Amazon, all the things. They, they like bringing business. Because <laughs> that's all Utah needs is another big uh, organization that doesn't pay taxes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, that's how we roll. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Allison, yes. you brought a topic today, allegedly? I did. I, my alleged topic, um, I actually was going to choose a different topic and then I just decided to switch it like <laughs> seconds ago. Um, <laughs> but because uh, my first topic was drone delivery. Thanks a lot. Oh, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> <laughs> um, my topic this week is contact improvisation. Contact improvisation. Mm -hmm. This is clearly um, related to electronics and um, it is a a new protocol for when you plug a cable in, there's actually no transmit receive pins assigned to the cable. So <laughs> the idea is when you plug it in, contact improvisation happens and the receiving and sending source agree on what wires they will use to transfer and receive data. That's an interesting theory, Thanks. Gary. Three uh, weeks in a row, three weeks in a row, make note. <laughs> It's an interesting nope, theory, Gary, uh, but in fact, contact improvisation is, is, so I, you know, have experience with improvisational theater and contact improvisation is obviously uh, some, there's, there's one of the improv games that we played 
uh, which was called freeze tag, which is not like the freeze tag that, that you think of when you think of freeze tag. Freeze tag is, is you're, you're playing a scene and then somebody sells freeze, says freeze, not sells, says freeze, and then you tag the person who is, and you assume their position that they were in, uh, and then you continue the scene, but you continue a new scene using the two or however many actors um, in the positions that they are. So you try to catch them in some interesting movement, and then you assume the position of one of those actors in that movement, and um, you touch them, and then they go off, and then you create a new scene with that, uh, starting with that movement. That that explains why you're having why you have that move. That is constant. So let me tell you everything I know about improvisation. Right. Um, number one, I assume that all improvisation eventually devolves into dirty jokes. Um, <laughs> Not true. <laughs> number two, I assume that people that take it seriously look down upon all the stuff that improv everywhere does. Those are the only two things I know, and they're probably not true, but they're things I believe. So, what's improv everywhere? They do some crazy stuff they do on some YouTube. Crazy stuff on YouTube. Like, huh? like, like flash mobs riding the subway in just your underpants. But like hundreds of people then hop on the subway in just their underpants. Like regular shirt. Or is that just like a flash mob? Yeah. I like I, that I, in Toronto, it's just like the no pants subway day. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, think, I, think, awesome. <laughs> I think that that would probably be, I think that's, I think your second assertion is probably correct is that okay. actual improv actors would probably look down on everything. That, I mean, I've seen some improv everywhere stuff that is, that would qualify. Like there is some, there's a thing where there is like dude dressed up as Gandalf standing on a bridge and he's, and he's like, you shall not pass. And they're like, no, I actually need to get through. Like, no, you shall not pass. <laughs> um, <laughs> that was pretty funny. I would love to see that. Uh, we will find the video and put it in the show notes. <laughs> I'd also love to see it in person. Just that would be a park bench scenario for sure. Yeah. Just, like, like, ooh, what's going to happen here? Yeah, like I could watch this for hours. I did. I did improv for, for quite a long time, actually. I was in improv competitions. So, so that, that is a thing. There are, in fact, competitions for such things as improvisation. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, and then, and then uh, in a different uh, subject, improvisation is. Um, you know, the thing that you didn't touch on when you talked about it, your understanding of improvisation is improvisation is also sort of a musical thing. And it also sort of describes my approach, but also the approach of jazz musicians. It's actually the reason why my, uh, my pseudonym is jazz sequence um, because of the improvisational elements of, of jazz and how I identify with them. So, yeah. But that is not contact improvisation. Maybe contact improvisation has to do with like playing drums on various like round <laughs> things, you know, trash cans and whatnot. Only round things. See, I think yeah. I, the, other thing, but the other thing that I was thinking of in, in contact improvisation is contact in the sense of like your contact list. So it's like, it's, it's like address book roulette. Oh, man. <laughs> So you, you have contact improvisation is when you flip through your, your address book and you're like, okay, that person, I'm going to call that person or email that person. Yeah. Contact yeah. improvisation. Hmm. And it's, I it's a Gmail, it's a Gmail add on where you just say, surprise me. And you just email. Yeah. Person. Why is that not a thing? I feel like, gee, like you could write like a like generic letter and just tell Google, like send someone I know. I'm feeling lucky. <laughs> yeah. I hey, just I was thinking of grandma. you. Wanted you to know how important you are to me hope life is great send like you just sent that to like some banker you worked with 18 years ago <laughs> yikes you're like i yikes. hope all is well with you <laughs> yeah. yeah i did picture like an old-fashioned rolodex though that you could actually like spin. that was what i had in my head and then i realized that metaphor doesn't work oh it still does i don't know in my head it still does <laughs> Actually, I, I, had a bit of, I had a bit of contact improvisation uh, in that sense recently when I was trying to put something on my Fantastical calendar. And um, so I have a contact in my address book because I imported at some point when I got, when I first got um, my Mac and I was trying to figure out like the contact list situation, um, I downloaded some app that would sync your contacts from Facebook. 
Mm. Um, so it just pulls in everyone. And then I figure, okay, well, that's, that's good. It'll be like everyone I ever know, knew, never ever needed to know, and then some, some extra stuff. So there is a person that I went to high school with named Erica. And Erica has the first three letters shared with my partner, Aaron. So I can't do E and then automatically assume that that's going to be her. I usually do ER, which narrows it down to those two people. And then last night as I'm adding this calendar invite on Fantastical, um, I accidentally clicked Erica instead of Aaron. And I'm pretty sure that Fantastical creates the, like, creates the notification and sends it as soon as the thing is saved um, when it hooks into to Google. So it's entirely possible that I just invited Erica to some event, <laughs> <laughs> which I think is like brick slopes, um, which is like a Lego uh, a, a conference in, uh, in Orem, uh, Utah, which is a few miles south of us uh, <laughs> next month. Um, so that's why I unfriended Erica. <laughs> <laughs> well, even unfriending wouldn't make a difference because she's still in my contacts now. She'll she's like, she's, she's been pulled over. She's been assimilated. Oh, yeah. And meanwhile, she gets this invite and it's just like, yeah, Chris is really like looking out for me. And like, <laughs> sounds super interesting. And How did she know I'm so into Lego? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, oh gosh, thinking yeah. of all the accidental events I could. <laughs> invite people to i feel I think, like yeah, i'd be curious to see how people would respond though i'm like i haven't talked to you in 10 years yeah but more like 15 or 20 this, this awkward yeah. family dinner <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean it's a thing that i have every single time i i add a contact or an add an event in fantastical because i always do the er and they always narrow it down that i always need to make a conscious decision i mean i could type Aaron. i could just type those other two letters but, <laughs> and sometimes I do, but like, you know, it's, it's, it's shorthand. And then I, and then I, yeah, it's always a thing. So Gmail, when you set like create a new account does not turn on like undo send by default. And I've had <laughs> to turn on my personal email for years. Um, in the last um, like two years, I've had two jobs at two different agencies and always a Gmail account. And I have like within the first week at both places, sent an email and gone to unsend it. And it's not available. <laughs> so that joker is gone. Um, you know, because like when you're new somewhere, you go, which, uh, which Steve is that? Which Sue is that? You know, and you send it and you wait, that was the wrong one. Totally. So well, that's it's a good even, way to introduce yourself to people, though. That's true. And it's not that's not even a worst case scenario that you sent it to the wrong. No. Like, I don't know. No, no. It would, that's, it, that's both were harmless, lot. but. <laughs> but but it's that whole neuroses, right? Like when you're in your first week, you're like, oh my gosh, they all know I'm an idiot now. <laughs> That's the time. I like to get it out of the way in that first week. <laughs> so then everybody... Uh, for me, that's like establishing the pattern, really. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, if I can't ask questions in the first week, then... Uh oh, <laughs> we're gonna have a, we're gonna have a problem on the second week. <laughs> <laughs> I have a rule to... Well... My partner has given me a rule, which is to never write email after like 10 p.m. Because <laughs> at, at, at some point in the, in the night, like there's no good email that you could write. <laughs> it's like just no, nothing you have to say can't wait to the next day. And, and anything that you think you have to say at 11 o'clock at night is probably not something you should be saying. Now I really want to get like a really ranty, weird email from you. Like I'll be, I'll check the timestamp. I'm like, oh, 1123, <laughs> like something, something bad. <laughs> it's true though. I mean, it's the same kind of thing of like nothing, nothing eventful or good ever happens after 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. Just go home. Don't, why are you out? Like nothing, nothing good will come of this, which you could argue against maybe because I think we all have some good stories from that. Oh boy. <laughs> um, but generally nothing good will, will come up staying out for no reason. <laughs> yeah. And then time zones play into it as well. That's true. When it's, when it's 3 a.m. in the uh, Pacific time zone, people on the East coast that I know are waking up <laughs> <laughs> and I've made those phone calls. <laughs> <laughs> That's, yeah, that's when you really want to get those emails. <laughs> like, why are you awake? What's happening? Um, 
contact improvisation is um, uh, is when like someone is smoking marijuana. It's like a contact high. It's like a contact high. <laughs> right. <laughs> so when someone is improv like like... and you feel the need to improv with them, or you're like just a little improv as a result of like the secondhand <laughs> improv. Contact, secondhand improv. I love that you're trying to talk. It's just a little bit, just a little bit of improv. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's 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 true. Once you get your first dose of improv, it's it's hard to it's hard oh, not it's, to continue the the habit. It's just it's not yes, chemically yeah. addictive. It's just physiologically addictive. <laughs> it's socially addictive. That's that's fair. What are we talking about again? A <laughs> uh, coffee, apparently. So, um, can I tell you my coffee story yesterday? Uh, about dropping it. Yeah, is that, I is that the, my coffee story. Is that the, mug, the mug? Yeah. Yeah, okay. there's a nice little ding, right? I don't know if you can see it, but it, um, Yeah, those of us listening in can definitely see that. Yep. So uh, I got tires yesterday, seven tires over the course of three and a half hours. <laughs> <laughs> and, and dropped a dramatically dropped my coffee cup. No relation to my frustration with getting seven tires, but I stood up and launched it and just spread I mean it was it was it was insane how much coffee came out of that cup. I mean, it was like special <laughs> effects, like explosive, like gallons of coffee. <laughs> did it also happen I mean, in I, slow motion, where you could see the did. you could see the cup like sort of tumbling slowly through the air, and, and the then, lid was like then... flipping. <laughs> so I drop it, and the I mean, the cup is like it's so empty, it's dry inside, like bone dry. I don't even know how it's possible, but there's like no remnants of coffee inside at all. So I grab the cup and I put the lid on. I walk over to the cashier's like counter. I'm like, I'm going to leave this here. I spit a little, but I need to clean up. Like, <laughs> like she just saw it happen, like, a little bit. Like, a swimming pool of coffee just plummeted into the waiting area somehow. <laughs> People are, like, rolling up their pants legs. There's so much coffee. I don't understand. <laughs> There's, like, an external source within. It's, like, Mary Poppins' carpet bag. <laughs> of, of yes. 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 And now I wish that existed, with, like, anywhere else. So I didn't have to get up off the couch and get more coffee when I'm like, oh, I need more coffee. And maybe if I bang it on the ground, it'll create more coffee. <laughs> I'm going to try that. But also let's go back to like seven tires. And you, <laughs> apparently, I, cause I hear that and I know that you don't drive a military grade vehicle that requires 20 nope. tires. <laughs> nope. Nope. I also do not own a semi truck or trailer, so there's really no reason for me to own seven tires. I actually only own four, but I own the, a different four than I thought I was buying. I tried to buy four tires, and they only had three of said tire, and they mounted those three, and then the guy came back and said, "So we mounted three of those tires." <laughs> we did the fourth the one. <laughs> we're just gonna we're just gonna put the old we're just gonna put the wheel back on, and then you can drive away on three wheels, and it's fine. Can you get it up on two wheels and steer home until we find that fourth tire? <laughs> So, but you're just replacing tires. This isn't, because you don't have winter tires in Florida, do you? No. What are winter tires? Okay. I'm going to say that. No, I don't have winter tires. Maybe <laughs> like, someone in Florida does. So, so, not everybody, but a lot of people have, t like, they'll have a set of winter tires, and then they'll have non-winter tires. Can we make this a topic for a minute? So, <laughs> my guess is winter tires have, like, metal studs sticking out of them to drive on ice, right? You would actually be correct. <laughs> really? Yeah. That's a thing that's legally allowed to be sold? Yeah. That seems so dangerous. <laughs> yeah. How does it keep the um, air in it if there's like, let, like metal sticking out? Because, of it? I guess, like, because the fly it's, or something? It's, it's embedded into the, the outer part of the rubber. Wow. So it's not, it doesn't go all the way through. It's just sort of like on the outside in the tread. And they do sometimes, oh. the, the metal studs do sometimes come off. But yeah, it gives you... It's, when, I mean, when, wow. uh, when at, at a certain point, you're going to want to get your, your winter tires changed because, you know, the studs are coming off or, or whatever. But it's more likely that you're going you're gonna to get new winter tires because, you know, the studs are worn down or the studs are coming off than it is that the tread is worn down because... So, so do they spark, like, on asphalt when the times you're not driving on the tundra? <laughs> not, not that like, I've ever seen. They're not, like, those, like, really intense, like... Yeah, it's not like you're going... Go, 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 go. With, like, with, like... It's not quite that extreme. So like a goth necklace is what you're yeah. saying? Okay. Yeah. Not like a giant punk rock tire. Yeah. Okay. Man. 
but that's what that that's, was what first came to my mind is when you were like oh i'm changing my tires i was like oh he's taking his winter tires off and putting and then i was just it's like, a little late for winter tires well yeah i was like it doesn't make sense for so many reasons <laughs> um <laughs> yeah so three were down to like the wear bar and then the fourth tire looked like pristine but i haven't replaced it so i don't know if maybe like that corner of the vehicle gets no weight or i, the, I have no idea but one tire looked really good I should have kept that one and told him to put the other three on and be done with it. But I wasn't thinking. I was too busy throwing coffee in the air. <laughs> a festive, in a festive manner, because that's how exciting tires are. Coffee confetti, yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, the receptionist or admin person, is you come over and you're like, I just have to clean this up. And they're like, yeah, yeah, you are going to clean that up. <laughs> she was super cool about it. Like, she came out and helped, and then they, they had somebody come out with a mop. That, that mop didn't stand a chance. I mean, it was like that. I don't know why it was that it's much coffee. Like paper towel scenario. Okay. It, it was. I probably used an embarrassing amount of paper towels trying to clean it up. And the, the best part was like it fell between all these people that are sitting there, and they're all just watching me. <laughs> like this coffee's everywhere. <laughs> Not you know? my problem. Yeah. yeah. You, you go clean that up. Full cups of coffee, being like that's too bad. Oh, and so I tried to have some more coffee there, but it's really bad. Shocker at the car service. Place. That's not their focus. It's really well brewed coffee. Yeah, but counting tires apparently isn't either. I feel like that <laughs> should probably be like in their oh, wheelhouse. Ching. Oh. <laughs> oh. That's so bad. So bad. I was working on a document with a colleague the other day and it was called um um it was like we're working on a project and we have some like clarification questions for strategy and it was called outstanding dev questions and near the end of the call I said, "Boy, this document is titled correctly. These dev questions really are outstanding. And it was like, <laughs> crickets. Finally, one of the PMs was like, just stop, please. <laughs> Tumbleweed <laughs> rolls by, they're like, no. <laughs> we, we need to have less meetings. <laughs> I was thinking like, just the devs themselves are outstanding. Yeah, right. Ooh, yeah, so I missed that. Take yeah, that no, question for case. outstanding devs. Yeah. Yeah. No, not the case. <laughs> um, quest, uh, it, it would be questions from outstanding devs in this case because it's, uh, it's a mm, complex okay. uh, follow up, but still. The That's questions okay. are outstanding. Yeah. So contact improvisation. Uh, does it yeah, I, it seems like we would have tangentially like hit the actual meaning of, of contact improvisation like Let's, accidentally. Let's let's um, let's let's expand our thought process and just make sure we're, we've been inclusive on all potential possibilities before we ask for clarifications. I case. guess the really the, the distinction is the definition of contact. I was thinking improvisation. <laughs> <laughs> so. So. What? And that's why. And that's why this is an interesting conversation. Yeah. <laughs> Two paths. <laughs> So do you want clarification? Wait, how, how to clarify improvisation? Yeah, improvisation is pretty, pretty. Contact, I, can, I, I see the like dual meanings, but improvisation, I'm confused on. Well, I guess it could be like, what, what, what like vertical are we discussing? I mean, improvisation in the context of, of acting makes a lot of sense or music, oh. but maybe improvisation is a, is a uh, technological approach to like returning variables when you have no idea what they should be. Right. That's not, a uh, thing. maybe it's, That's not a it thing. is the way I work. I always <laughs> like, know what do you have no, are. then the answer is seven or 42. It's, it's not a thing. It's not a way that programs work, Gary. I don't know what software you're writing. Programming improvisation. That's I could get behind that though. Just like, just a little of this. Is it, who knows? Is it returning a Boolean or a string? Who cares? Wee! <laughs> and that's why we're all PHP devs. Yeah. Did you see this? So as I mean, like now we're in the nerd hole, so let's just get way down there. Did you see the tweet from, uh, I don't even remember who it was. Someone posted a, uh, a WP core function that had um, potentially six return types. <laughs> Six, at that point, like, you don't have a return type. If you have six return types, like, good luck. You know, <laughs> good luck. You could get anything. And I get it that, for, like, that meta. That right there is, that, that's contact, that's return improvisation. Yeah. <laughs> it, right, so contact improvisation would be um, 
when you um, inject a class, that's the contact, um, the, um, the improvisation is that it could, uh, it, I don't know. It's back, it's, you know, me, you know me well enough to know that I wouldn't bring something to the table that has to do with injecting a class. <laughs> um, no, I, I would, actually, no. what's, what's interesting though, is that I started writing a, um, a, a plugin, a WordPress plugin for storing your contacts so that there's a universal, like, like canonical contact list, because really like the idea came from the fact that we have this address book, a physical address book with people's actual physical addresses in them. And the problem with that is that people move or people die or like phone numbers change or they disconnect their landline and then you like scratch out all this stuff. So then you have these people with like these page long addendums of all. And then like you kind of want to have a historical reference of all the different places that people did live, but you don't want to have it like, like, well, that's not, and you don't want to get confused. And like, we have this problem every year where we have like these old addresses for people and we're sending out Christmas cards, or whatever. And we have the wrong address and we have to keep track of whose address we have that's wrong. Um, so anyway, uh, it's called address book and it's a plugin that I was working on. Um, and, and so contact improvisation is now going to be a new feature <laughs> where it'll just return you a, a random person in your address book. Just improvisation. There you go. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to make, I'm going to make a feature. I'm going to make an issue, uh, today now. Cause then it's like, if you want to have a pen pal or you're like a letter writer, then it's like, Oh, who do I send a letter to this month? Great. Yeah. Bam. Contact improvisation. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> it's better than the real definition. I yeah, think all, definition? all of these are probably better than the real definition. <laughs> <laughs> I really like the contact high version of in contact improvisation. <laughs> I think that's probably my favorite. Like a little improv. <laughs> a little improv -y. Also, yeah, so what is it really? <laughs> what is it really? Um, it is a form of improvised dancing that was developed in the 70s. It's basically like the exploration of how other people's bodies can come into contact with your body. And it can look really, really bizarre as a result um, because it's lots of just like exactly what you might expect because there's no plan. And so, uh, yeah. Is there music playing when there's contact improvisation be, happening? Yeah. Because um, I could totally see this being like done in total silence. I've seen it done in total silence and it's even weirder. Uh, yeah. I, I think it would be preferable in total silence. I feel like the music would inter like influence. Yeah. It would influence the movement. The so you take significantly. Yeah. 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 So like you so do it. And, the, and then if you don't, if you don't have the music, then, then the movements are going to be influenced probably, I'm assuming by everyone else, but like it's going to honestly. By the human noises, if, like your elbow cricking well, or no, like it's that gonna be like somebody's sound gonna start like somebody's going to start doing Legs this make when you, and then yes. someone else is going to also do something that's similar to that because other people are doing that. It's going to be like a, a critical mass sort of like a uh, mob psychology thing. Yeah. Like they want to mirror the, the motions that right. their sort of group is doing, but there's like a lot of playing with like falling off balance, finding like balance based on other people's. That totally like, describes my golf dancing. Right? Like <laughs> Like, I don't know. And then there's like I, a lot of people. Yeah, it's just lots of like, it's, it's a very bizarre experience to watch, I would say. Like, I wouldn't call it a comfortable dance to watch because I think I get stressed out about the improv idea of it because like so much of it is it's also because like I get uncomfortable when there are people around. So improv dancing with someone and not knowing what's happening is seems like it's like watching ice skaters where I'm like, I get concerned for them. <laughs> yeah. Is it, Chris, as an Im improvist, um, <laughs> is, is, um, hold on, we're losing a pass over here. Is, um, isn't part of like the concept of improv, like the, like embracing that you are going to feel weird and wacky and uncomfortable. Uh -huh. And that's like to go with that and embrace that. Uh huh. Um, yeah, that sounds miserable the, to me. So the first thing I'm going to do. The first thing, the first thing. So, so when I was in in drama and theater, or when in high school, um, like basically the first day. I mean, we started. We basically started and ended with with improv because improv is such an important part of of, of theater. Because when you screw up on the stage, you need to be able to get yourself out of a hole. Um, so, 
the first thing that we did is like, you're going to feel stupid. And whenever you feel stupid, you say, I feel stupid. And then everybody claps, like celebrate that, that feeling like an idiot. Oh man, I should do that when I'm writing code. <laughs> I feel stupid. You know, I already do that when I write code. <laughs> I, I just mumble to myself. I don't really like throw my hands in the air and announce it, but I should, I, man, I need a button I can just mash that like posts in Slack, you know? And there'd be sometimes during the day, like it would post like 27 times in a row as I'm beating on it, you know? <laughs> Instead of hair pulling, it's just hitting. Yeah. Up. I'm confused. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> that is why, I, I guess to that end, like that's why, so pair programming and improv probably is like a lot of similarity there, right? Like it is uncomfortable to pair program with someone um, because you're like, oh man, I can't believe I have to look up this function or like, what's that syntax? And you feel like a complete like moron, right? Um, and you have to do a lot of programming with someone that is also like feeling a complete moron to realize like, oh yeah, of course no one has all this crap memorized. Like that would be ridiculous. What a dumb assumption. I love seeing I mean, I guess, when people Google. I also just love seeing how they Google things. <laughs> That's probably a whole um, <laughs> like research program at this point is how, how do you utilize Google? Just you what know? keywords? Mm. Or, yeah, well, yeah, it, used to like, be, it used to be that, that I would just type in keywords into Google, but now it can in, increasingly, this, the, and I learned this from Aaron, um, increasing the types of things that I Google are like actual questions, like the things that you would ask Wolfram, Wolfram Alpha, the things that Wolfram Alpha were built for, where you ask like human readable questions and it returns a human readable answer. Those are the things that like I end up asking Google because I figure, well, somebody will probably have had a question that is something similar to these, you know, to this question. And you actually get pretty good results uh, generally. Mm -hmm. That's true. I've started like typing out legit human readable questions. Yeah. Lots of, I, lots of most, like existential. <laughs> and it's so hard when you like type something, you're like, I can't be the first person that asks this, but it's so general. I'm not sure how to phrase it. And so you phrase it 27 different ways and you get like <laughs> the same five like responses just sort of differently each way you, you, you phrase it. You're like, what am I, what <laughs> word am I not using that like a normal human would use to search this? And it, it's, it's like, that's like that thing, like when you go to dry your hands like in the bathroom and they have the, like the automatic towel dispenser and it doesn't see you, like, what the hell? Man, there's that's lots, just- Then there's lots of you being like, I exist, I am here. <laughs> I know, you like tap the mirror or like you just say hello to the next person you see just to see if they respond, just to make sure. <laughs> like, yes, okay. Um, hey, um, we, reached the, we reached the part of the show where we answer questions. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do, do, do. Okay. Well, this one plays into it well then. Um, how long have you known your oldest friend? Um, the one that has I the was... longest record of changed addresses. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I was 16. My buddy Evan lives in Tampa and he has lived in um, Michigan, Orlando, Lakeland, Tampa. Um, He's back in Tampa now. There was Tampa several times in that mix. Um, so uh, 20, 21 years, 20, 20 years, 20 something years. Well, 20. Doesn't need to be an exact number. I won't be following through with research to, to back up these. Start supposed, the next episode like, memes. it was 20 years, three months, <laughs> four weeks, two days, 19 hours and 38 seconds. He doesn't really exist. No. He tapped on the glass. The, my oldest friend that I am still uh, actively in touch with is probably Aaron. Mm -hmm. So what, that's, what year is it now? Uh, 2018. 2018. <laughs> so uh, when and I would be that, be, but I think that would be 20 years, maybe 19. Because right. we met each other and we, were, we knew each other and of each other for a couple of years before we actually started dating although dating isn't really the right word exactly because we you already knew each other yeah and we didn't really date we kind of went to, like, <laughs> we, we kind of went to to some we went on a couple dates but we've never really dated you We're should just, try it but, was it was just like this is happening at this point you should, 
you should go on some dates. See. Well, we do, we do, we we definitely we we do go on dates sometimes now. But yeah, we we didn't ever really date when dating would have been appropriate. <laughs> it's always appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> but you know like dating is usually at the beginning of the relationship and like when you're trying to figure each other out and like we just sat up all night and figured each other out like and then all night like in the hallway conversation Aww. that's the best yeah so yeah i mean that that and that sort of that sort of like beginning kind of precludes the the dating things like when you're when you're staying up all night and talking then there's really no need to date at that point <laughs> Yeah, you've covered, yeah. you've covered all the conversational ground. That right, I right. There's no, there's no idle chit-chat. It's just like, we're doing this. <laughs> oh, but when dating is and is not appropriate. Yeah. You didn't really do it when it would have made the most sense, but... Okay. Um, all right. On a completely different note, do both of you still have your appendix? Yes. No? I also have my tonsils. I do? And tonsils? Uh, no wisdom teeth? I have all my wisdom teeth. Oh, wow. Oh, interesting. Brave soul. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's actually, it's actually less of a brave soul and more of a cowardly soul because I don't want to go oh, and get them removed. Well, no, if you, if you don't need to, then don't, it's needless. They're not bothering you. That, that's the theory that I'm going with. Yeah. Well, that's what You're my dentists have always said. I don't know. I lost my wisdom teeth a while ago. Not lost. They were taken. <laughs> <laughs> they were taken from you at an early age. Wow. Like missing wisdom teeth. Gone. Good poster. They're yeah. gone now. Yeah, Chris, I would put it off until they cause you some kind of discomfort. Yeah. Yeah. Because. Which I have been doing. Awful. Yeah. Yeah. I, I did successfully for, for a lot of years, probably longer than I should have. Yeah. I mean, I've gone to the dentist. When I've gone to the dentist, it's like, oh, yeah, these things need to come out. I'm like, Pfft. No, they don't. Like, you need to get out. <laughs> Humans have survived for hundreds of years without having their wisdom teeth ripped out of their heads, so I think that I'm okay. Yeah. Well, and some people... But never not one individual teeth. human. <laughs> yeah. I had a roommate, uh, a roommate from high school who um, had nine wisdom teeth, and oh. I... Compared she was to extra sharp, wise. To a shark, which she, she did not appreciate. Yeah, she was, she was extra wise. <laughs> yeah. So her recovery from wisdom teeth was a lot more. Yeah, no kidding. Holy cow. Also, I was just like, how do you have enough room for that many extra teeth? I just didn't. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a pound of teeth. <laughs> That's crazy. A lot of teeth. A lot of extra teeth. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Uh, yeah, my jaw wouldn't sustain nine. Well, I'm just, yeah, I was like, of course they have to come out. Like, what, how are you even, how are you even being? <laughs> I, had, I had an extra canine tooth. I had extra, two extra teeth. One came out really easily and one came out with like the bone. And Oof. Oh yeah, it was, yeah. This is a weird yeah. note to end on. I feel like we need to stop talking about it. <laughs> Remember to flush it. Fr <laughs> to flush? To brush yes, remember to flush. <laughs> brush, and brush and floss daily. <laughs> Yeah, this that's what I was trying to say. you by dental hygiene. <laughs> <laughs> Only floss the ones you want to keep. <laughs> see, Chris, floss those uh, wisdom teeth, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Good luck with that. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Yep. <sighs> it's still a weird ending. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have, more, I have one more question, but it's, it's a, again, it needs to roll over because it's less than a minute what if you ask it and we just leave it hanging on the question oh no that would be awful it would be like ending on like a unresolved chord I, which is thank you for listening to binary jazz if you like this episode you can subscribe to us on itunes or google play you can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on twitter at at binary jazz don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.